Hello everyone. In this uh, short lecture, we are going to go to qualitative data. So this is just an example to see how um, how this works. I'm exploring a mother's perceptions about the evil I believe and related concerns about the infant health. Here I will quote a small piece of data from an interview. In this data, a mother is telling about how her child was inflicted with the evil eye. Evil eye or in Urdu language we say it Nazar Lagna. It is a worldwide popular belief and its practice varies according to social culture context of the people uh, believing in it. First of all, I will read the data thoroughly. So this is this is my first step of analysis that I will read the text, the data thoroughly. So here is the story. When my son was born, he was very beautiful, fair color and a healthy child. There was a woman in our neighborhood. Her son was born 10 days before my son's birth. Her child got sick when he was only one month old and died. When my son was two months old, that woman, the neighbor woman, visited, visited me and my baby. My son was wearing white embroidered clothes. She looked at my child and picked, it hum, picked him up and started hugging and loving him. Then she started crying. After she left, my child started crying. He did not stop and continued crying. He was not taking feed. After a while, he was suffering from fever. It was too sudden, I got worried. I was afraid that it might be the evil eye of that woman. My next step will be memorizing. After reading the text, uh, I mean the data, now I am trying to understand what I have read. Also I am thinking about any questions that are coming to my mind. Uh, for example, I have written these questions in my memo book. What is being told in this story? A male child who died and other male child who got sick. The male child is beautiful. What is being told about the beauty of the child? A woman who lost her child. A woman whose child got sick. What is the connection be between these two women? Evil effects or symptoms. What makes her think that woman who lost her child is evil eye possessor? How do the evil eye work in this story? And what makes the child exposed to the evil eye? These are some questions, some thoughts that come to my mind when I was reading the story. Now I will read the data again and divide the text in several chunks giving each chunk a number. And here we go. When my son was born, chunk number one, he was very beautiful. Number two, fair complexion, three, and healthy child, four. There was a woman in our neighborhood and her son was born 10 days before my son's birth, five. Her child got sick when he was only one month old and died. 6. When my son was two months old, that woman, neighbor woman, visited me and my baby. 7. My son was wearing white embroidered clothes. Number 8. She looked at my child. 9. And picked him up and started hugging and loving him. 10. Then she started crying. 11. After she left, my child started crying. 12. He was continuously crying. 13. He was not taking feet. 14. After a while, he was suffering from high fever. 15. It was too sudden, I got worried. 16. I was afraid that it might be the evil eye of that woman. 17. So you see, I have divided all the story in 17 chunks. Uh, and actually, I was um, uh, also using the memo that I have written and I, I have shown you a while ago. Now I am going to start coding uh, all the chunks that uh, I have just numbered. So my first chunk was when my son was born. So I am giving it a code. It's kind of initial coding that should be very simple as I told earlier. So the, my first chunk was when my son was born. A male child born then number two he was very beautiful 
I am coding it as a beautiful child, fair color, fair colored skin and healthy child. I am using it healthy child. Uh, there was a woman in our neighborhood. Her son was born 10 days before my son's birth. So a neighbor woman. So I am giving her a name actually an alphabet here that is K. So the K means the neighbor woman and she was the mother of a child. And her child got sick when he was only one month old and died. I am giving it a quote. K's son died at the age of one month. When my son was two months old, that woman, neighbor woman, visited me and my baby. Number seven, K visited the child. My son was wearing white embroidered clothes. Number eight, child was child with white embroidered clothing. Then she looked at my child. K looked at the child, number 9, then uh, picked him up and started hugging and loving him. Number 10 is K hugged and loved the child, then she started crying. 11. K cried. After she left, my child started crying. K left and the child started crying. He was continuously crying. Number 13. Child continuously cried. He was not taking food. Number 13, not taking feet. After a while, he was suffering from high fever. Number 15, suffering from fever. It was too sudden. I got worried. Sudden effects. I was afraid that it might be the evil eye of that woman. Fear of the evil eye of K. So if you see that I have used all the chunks and I, I have coded all the chunks but I used very simple words that can tell me the story even this data text is not there. So this is just a kind of line by line initial coding that must be very simple and very uh, straightforward into the data. Let's see uh, the codes without text. I mean now we are going to see the codes without the transcribed data. And then we will read our memo and let's see what happens. With these quotes, we should be able to re revisit the whole story being told by the participant, even if we are not looking at the data again. And we can find answers to all or several of our, our questions that we have written in our memo book. See these quotes. Male child uh, was born. He was beautiful with fair color skin and he was healthy. Uh, there was a neighbor woman in the story whose male child died at the age of one month. And when that uh, <coughs> neighbor woman visited the child, the child was wearing white clothing. Uh, she looked at the child. She loved the child. But then she cried. And after she left, the child started crying. And uh, it, 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 he does not stop crying. And then he is not taking feet. He was suffering from the fever, and it was perceived as a kind of sudden effects. And the participant thinks it is an evil eye of the the woman uh, who, who was there. So if you see these quotes, you can revisit all the story again. And in these quotes, you can find uh, almost all the answers that you have written in your memo book. For example, what does a beautiful child mean here? Uh, why the beautiful child is vulnerable, why the woman is perceived as kind of evil eyed and what happened, I mean what happened to the child, I mean the process of the evil eye and what are the effects. Now I will define these codes and I will cluster them into categories and I will see that refined codes should be more conceptual. Uh, um, I mean from the initial codes I will refine them in kind of more conceptual categories. I will also cluster them to represent meaning of the data in different conceptual categories and then we can also name those conceptual categories as themes. Now let's have a look what codes are telling about what. Code number 2, 3, 4 and 8 these codes are about beauty of the child. Similarly the code number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 8 these codes are about the vulnerability of the child. Uh, while code number 5 is uh, not really uh, about the vulnerability of the child, but uh, actually this is about the male child. So I am putting it here. Male child is vulnerable. vulnerable. I mean it is exposed to the eye. 
Then you see code number 5, 6 and 17. These are about a person who is being blamed here as an evil eye possessor, a neighbor woman. Then you see uh, how does the evil eye work. So you see code number 7, 9, 10, 11, 12 and then 16. These codes are telling you something about how the evil eye is at evil one is working in this in this story then code number 12 13 14 15 and 16 these codes are about the effects that you see um, evil eye has done uh, on the child okay when we proceed further we will see that how we will cluster and refine these codes wherever they are required number one uh, I am I have divided into several tables so the first table is about the conceptual category of the beautiful child uh, the initial code is beautiful child we we will put it as as it is in the refined code then you have a fair color skin we can say it a fair complexion healthy child okay it's it is fine and then child with white embroidered clothing so we can say it a well-dressed child so now this table one it describes about the participants meaning of a beautiful child as it emerged from the data a beautiful child is one who is fair in complexion who is healthy and who is well dressed then in the second table we are talking about the vulnerable child so four of the codes are same uh, as you have seen in the first table that is about the beautiful child and the child is vulnerable because you see that this is a male child who is being affected by the evil eye so the table 2 it also tells about the child who is exposed to the evil eye so it is a beautiful child a male child who is exposed to the evil eye so in table 1 and table 2 uh, let's let's see what are the similarities we see can we say a beautiful child may be vulnerable child exposed to the evil eye yes that is just that and is a male child is vulnerable and exposed to the evil eye? Yes, we see it in the data. But when you will answer these questions, actually you will explain this question that why it is happening there, then actually you will produce an interpretation of the data. But you have to connect it to several theoretical perspectives that you have used in the study. In table 3, we have, uh, try, we have tried to identify the evil eye possessor uh, as reported by the participant. So according to the participant, an uh, evil eye possessor is a neighbor woman, mother of a male child, and uh, so, uh, I mean, a well-known person. Participant uh, knows her pretty well. And uh, this neighbor woman has an accident in her life. Uh, her son died at the age of one month, so she is desperately, uh, I mean, deprived person. She is distressed. And then... Uh, she was being blamed or uh, I mean the participant actually is suspicious about her uh, and then uh, she considers her as kind of kind of evil eye possessor so the table 3 actually telling us about the evil eye possessor so who is an evil eye possessor someone we know very well someone who has lost the most valued person in his her life someone whose distressed memories disturbs her someone who is stigmatized or what she is deprived of so when you will explain these um, um, statements that actually you have derived from the table uh, of thematic categories then you will produce another interpretation that will tell about who is the evil eye possessor table 4 table 4 is actually about the evil eye at work it is actually telling you how does it happen so K visit the child, I mean that the person who is, who is known here as the evil eye possessor, her physical presence uh, was, I mean she was there, so her physical presence uh, was necessary and then she was looking at the child, a gaze, she was hugging and loving the child, expression of love and then she was also crying because her memories triggered, so she was also expressing distress and desperation. And then it was also reported that as soon as she left, the child started crying. And the participant reported all the effects as sudden effects. So the table 4 is telling us about how and why the evil eye works. So how does it work? 
uh, evil eye possesses physical presence is important but we have come to know now the physical presence is important the gaze is very dangerous so it means if someone want to uh, be protected or want to be uh, on the safe side uh, the devil like possessor once identified should not have a physical presence near the children or should not have a direct gaze towards the children okay then expressions of love that figures his her distress so it means that even an evil eye possessor uh, is loving the child uh, these expressions of love can trigger his or her distress so the sense of deprivation insecurity these things can link her emotional collapse to his her physical gestures such as the gaze and that could cause damage now these points i derived from that table and when you will explain these points you will produce an interpretation and definitely you need a theoretical perspective for that table 5 it's about evil eye effects uh the child is crying and uh, continuously crying it means child is uneasy not taking feed it, she he the child is refusing feed and then the child is suffering from fever and these are the effects that happens as soon as the evil eye possessor left the child so the table 5 is all about the evil of eye eye effects we can categorize it kind of unexplained physically visible and may become serious because child is also suffering from fever and you see that gradually child started crying then the child refused any feed and then the child um, uh, got fever as well so then when you will explain these effects you will find that somehow these effects are also taken as kind of symptoms that can that can help to detect the evil eye uh in this story you know you will combine all these tables as required and you can also make illustrations of the connections that you just discovered and then you will explore this phenomena um anyhow this was just a kind of um coding from the scratch and making a kind of picture so that you can understand uh, all the story in a qualitative way